pray, O oh God, Lord, that you would speak to them and through them. And Lord, that we who have ears to hear will hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity you give to us once again to hear your word for your anointing. We pray for Reverend Robinson, Lord, that he will be clear, he will be bold, knowing that the Lord our God is with him. Knowing that his people are ready to hear a word and message from you. Lord, be sure that we will be delighted in what we hear. But help us to be just not listeners only, but doers of your word. And we'll be so careful to give you honor and praise and glory for how you've blessed us with this message today. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Afternoon, Saints. Afternoon. The title of this message is The Necessary Intercessor. There's an old hymn that goes like this. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray. Lord, way down yonder by myself. And I couldn't hear nobody pray. And God is always looking for people to pray. When you spoke to Isaiah, even though he was speaking of the salvation of Israel, how God constantly sent his prophets to Israel and they would remain stubborn, he asked a question, which can also very well apply, apply to prayer. When I called, no one answered. When I spoke, no one listened. Saints, God is not only looking, listening for prayers, he's looking for prayers. And it was Augustine who wrote that prayer is the only omnipotence God has given to us. Mm. Prayer is the only omnipotence that God has given to us. And what did he mean by that? By that he meant when we pray, we are entering into God's work with all of God's purpose, with all of God's omnipotence with us when we pray. So we have no excuse not to pray. God is looking for, listening for, those necessary intercessors who will pray with God's purpose in mind. There's nothing when we're praying for our own requests, but sometimes we can get that God has concerns that he wants to get expressed. And he does it through us, through his will. What do we mean by an intercessor? An intercessor is a person who is willing to intercede or petition on behalf of someone else. Now we're commanded to pray for one another. And through Christ we have been made a kingdom of priests. Now back in Old Testament times, the task of the priest was to not only offer sacrifice, but also to teach the people and to pray for the people. There was only one sacrifice that has been made. We don't have to do that. Christ was our sacrifice. He intercedes for us continually, and we are to pray. Not just for people, but for the world. Not for just our own church congregation, but for the world. God is looking for some necessary intercessors. And this is, in a sense, but not an emphasis on prayer meeting, too. We can come to prayer meeting. That's part of the intercession. And I hope that through this message, some of us will come to prayer meeting. We were made a kingdom of priests. By refusing to pray, I'm laying aside my priestly duty, my obligation to God. And in praying for our own concerns, I put it this way. It's okay to pray for our concerns, but we need to leave our prayer bubble with our concerns and enter into the closet where we can pray for God's concerns. That's going to take time. It's going to take discipline. In a nutshell, every one of us is a necessary intercessor. Every one of us. Everyone who names the name of Christ, who says Jesus is Lord, is saying Jesus is my Lord, you are the necessary intercessor. The nature of intercession is such that 
There are also those whom God has gifted in that area. And those who are enabled by the Holy Spirit to pray for extended periods of time and to see results of their prayers, their answers to prayers, to a degree that the average Christian may or may not see. People with this gift find themselves being pulled to pray and often work with the burden they can't understand or grasp. All they know is they need to pray to illustrate. This is God's throne. Here we are, the average believer. We go to pray. We go to pray, send our prayers up to God. God hears, answers, and responds. The person with the intercessory gift goes to pray. He prays. He or she prays. Listen to God. But somewhere in between that, God puts a burden on that person for someone or something, and they find themselves being burdened. Being further burdened. You can be so burdened that it comes to the point when all you can do is go to your knees, and after that, you're still burdened. What do you do? Prostrate. Does God hear both prayers? Yes. yes. Do you hear the regular believer's prayer? I hear put it that way. Did he hear the average Christian's prayer? Yes. Did he answer? Yes. Did he hear the person with the gift of intercession prayer? Yes. Oh, yeah, he heard. In ways that they could not expect. I was reminded of something that happened when I was a young believer. One of the few cities over in Calvary Gospel Church as a young adult so long ago. <laughs> and I was praying. <laughs> Don't laugh, we had to. <laughs> and I was praying one night. And all of a sudden I had this burden to be praying for someone who used to be the assistant pastor of this church. It wasn't Pastor Davis, it was someone else. Well, I choose to remain nameless because I don't know if he's still doing this work or not. But anyway, I had a burden to be praying for this person. And the next day I spoke with Helen Wilcox. And I said, I had to be praying for this person. I'll talk who the person was. And she said, why didn't you come to my I said, I had to pray for them last night. And it's just the prayer wouldn't leave me. She said, well, nobody's supposed to know, but he's trying to smoke Bibles in China. Did that boost my prayer? Yes. Did it encourage me? Yes. Never fear that your prayers will not be heard by God. If we can sit down and say how cute a baby is when the baby's trying to talk, God does the same thing with us. All he says is, come on, baby, keep talking. I'm listening. Never put off prayer. Nothing is too simple that God will not listen to it. I know, because he listened to me. And what in my mind is this battle, to him is music. Our prayers is music to God's ears. But he's looking for prayers and listening for prayers. Not all have the gift, but we are all commanded to pray. Jesus still said, don't think about what you're going to pray. The Father knows what you need before you ask him. That doesn't mean that we need not pray. That's insensitive prayer. When we pray, we enter into God's work with God's purpose and with all of God's omnipotence behind us and with us. Can we ever lose in prayer? No. Has God ever lost the battle? No. Will he lose the battle? No. Can we lose a battle? Yes. Can we go to pray in our own strength? Will we go to pray about only what we want every time? Gimme, 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 gimme. And God says, give me your heart. We even have some examples of intercessors in scripture. Abraham, just to name a few. Abraham, Job, Moses. Abraham interceded on behalf of Sodom when God made up his mind to destroy him. And in this conversation with God, that's what prayer it is, conversation with God, Abraham asked God, shall not the judge of all the earth do what is right? He wasn't judging God. He was surprised. 
To hear this coming from the God he thought he knew. He said, shall not the judge of all the earth do what is right? He interceded. And in spite of his prayer, or maybe because of it, Sodom was destroyed. Because Abraham, I don't want to hate to say this, war got down to the point where he said that there were 20, then he dropped all the way to 10, and God said, I want to destroy for the sake of 10. The next up was, if there was only one, God would have spared that city, but there was not one. Not one. But God heard his prayer. He called Abraham his friend. He said, shall I tell Abraham what I'm about to do? It's not Abraham's business. But because he had this intimate basis with God, God said, shall I tell him what I want to do? Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is right? Job interceded for his friends at God's command, at God's pull, if you will, because God was ready to nuke them. Sorry about y'all on thing. You know, he was ready to take them out because they had spoke what was right about God, as Job did. Moses, he was always interceding for Israel. But there's one particular time during the incident of the golden calf, God was ready to wipe them out. And he said something to Moses that was very tempting. I'm going to wipe them out and make a new nation from you. What about God's promise to Abraham? God didn't forget his promise. That was a test for Moses. But instead, saying, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Moses interceded. He said he was zealous for God's reputation. He was worried about what the enemies of God would say. Saying that because he couldn't bring them into the land he promised them, he destroyed them in the wilderness. And then he says, so far be it from you. Huh? And then there's Daniel. We might call him also a man after God's own heart, because he was a man greatly loved. I mean, how many times would you love for God to come? This is what angels be said to you. I said, I'm gonna pray. And all of a sudden the angel pops up. The minute you set your mind to pray, God sent me to you. Yeah. Sorry, saints, that's not gonna happen. You gotta work. Prayer is work. Okay. But he was a man greatly loved by God. And his name means God is a judge. What did he do? He read the scriptures. And he found out that the time for Israel's exile would soon come to an end. So what did he do? Did he sit and twiddle his thumbs and say, okay, it's going to come, I'm going to wait? Yeah. He prayed. He fasted. And fasting and sackcloth is a sign of great distress. On the one hand, he was rejoicing that the time was almost up. But on the other hand, he was in great distress because his people were in distress. And even more, God himself was in distress because he had to exile his people. And what did he do when he prayed? He told God what God had said. Even what Jeremiah had said. All the prophets told Israel everything that God had told them through Moses. When you get a chance to read Deuteronomy 28 and think about what happened in Israel in the Bible. Everything that happened. And that's what Daniel told God what he said. And he appealed to God's justice, his mercy, and his grace. And God heard him. How do we know? Israel got out of exile. All he said was, we have sinned. As intercessors, I can't set myself, as intercessors, we cannot set ourselves apart from everybody else. Amen. Lord, we pray for these sinners. Amen. Right. No, we have sinned. Right. It's only by God's grace that we are in a position where God can hear us and listen to us and welcome us. There is no one upmanship in God's family. When he calls us to pray, we have to pray. Not just for our own concern, but for his also. God's concerned about the world being saved. Don't let anybody fool you. He's not concerned about what's going on over there in the Mideast. That's where everything's going to take place. The focus is not the Western world. The focus is the Middle East in God's eyes. He is concerned. Well, God is God. What can I do about it? You can pray. You're the necessary intercessor. Don't lay back and complain about your leaders. You're the necessary intercessor. When I say you, I mean me too. Daniel read the scriptures and discerned it was time. It was near that time. Since we look around in the world today, can we discern the times? 
Instead of saying, well, the Lord won't come soon, we should be praying that he comes soon. God's justice, mercy, and grace can be discerned at times. And if we can discern them, we should go to our knees, laying prostrate in them. What God's will be brought about. Not what we think it may be, what we would hope it would be, but what he lets us know what it is. Oh, one other thing. Thank you, Lord. If you find yourself praying in the tongue, don't fight it. If you find yourself praying in the tongue, you have to give the tongues. Pray. It frees you up when you're praying. I know I have that gift. I'm not bragging you God to praise. It takes a little off you. And sometimes God lets you know that you're praying. We're told that if anyone has a gift, if anybody speaks in the tongue, let that person pray that they may interpret. That happened to me one time. And I had to laugh about it. I told Joan Harrington about it. I saw this time I was praying in the tongue and didn't know what it was. So I go into prayer one afternoon, right? I'm praying with in English. I started praying in the tongue. I'm answering in English and I'm praying in the tongue. And then I understand what's going on. I said, oops. He gave me the interpretation. So if you're praying in the tongue and you, you're praying, you don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit helps us. Sometimes when you pray in the tongue, it edifies us, but it also helps us to pray according to God's will. But if it's in public, there should be an interpretation. Remember that. I'm very skeptical of people going on the service and all of a sudden they start bringing out a uh-uh, no. I get a very bad feeling. Maybe it's me, maybe it's the Lord. I don't know. But whenever the tongue takes place in the church, there has to be an interpretation. If not, shut your mouth. And pray to God yourself. Okay? Oh yeah, intercession. Exercise the gift God has given you. Abraham, Job, Moses, Daniel. All had this and had these things in common. One, they were on an intimate relationship with God. Two, they appealed to his character and mercy. Third, they told him what he had already said. And fourthly, they had faith that they could speak to God and pray and be heard. And the scriptures tell us, without faith it's impossible to please God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he is a word of those who earnestly seek him. We can't go to God with a half heart or two to pray. It's an earnest. In sackcloth and ashes, if you will, in our minds. How can you be on an intimate basis with God? First of all, you have to belong to Him. If I were right now walk out of here, walk up to a woman and hug on the street, she'd probably knock my brains out or call the cops. Maybe both. Because she doesn't know me. And I don't know her. But when you're on an intimate relationship with God, God says, hey, psh. just like when Satan appeared, in heaven and accused Job, God acted like he didn't even hear him. He said, let's go. And now when Satan appears in heaven before God accusing us, Jesus says, hey, I died for that person. And God says, you out of here. Okay. You had to belong to him. Secondly, <coughs> as believers, we encouraged, we exhorted, we commanded to pray, pray. We commanded to read the scriptures. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. And practice. Do not just be listeners, but doers. Read, practice, study God's word. Why? If I want to pray God's will, I have to know who God is. I have to know what his will. And the only way I want to do that is if I read the scriptures. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Amen. How can I pray? Some suggestions, just a few. First of all, thank God for our salvation. Yeah. Without that, your prayers are going to hit the ceiling and hit you in the head. Thank God for salvation. Share your thoughts and concerns with Him. 
Don't worry about saying using the right words. The right words. If you speak from the heart, if you speak with God, if you speak with your best friend, God will hear you. Ask yourself about the situation. What did the scripture say? Lord, it is written. This way gets tricky. Pray for anyone or anything the Holy Spirit may bring to mind. Pray for anyone or anything the Holy Spirit may bring to mind. You never know what God has in store. He made me laugh one time when I was praying. I said, Lord, was this for me or for somebody else? It was like the Holy Spirit said, don't worry about it, it wasn't for you. I mean, I, I express that because that's the way I have my relationship with him. He has a sense of humor. He made me. It's okay to laugh. I laugh at myself a lot of times. Never take yourself too seriously that you can't laugh at yourself. Thanks for salvation. Share your thoughts and concerns. Ask yourself what the scripture says. Be ready to pray for anyone or anything the Holy Spirit brings to mind. You are the necessary intercessor. Follow these things. I said it before, and I'll say it again. The Father planned our salvation. Jesus, our high priest, continually intercedes for us in heaven. And the Holy Spirit intercedes for us as we pray. Do we dare not pray? We are the necessary intercessor for all of God's might and power and presence behind us and around us, to the left of us, to the right of us. He is our covering. We are the necessary intercessors. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you planned it all. Even to this moment, Lord, where we are and who we are this time in our walk with you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you always intercede for us. First, because we thank you because you laid down your life for us. You shed your blood for us in sacrifice. And it's through your blood that we've been cleansed. By your death, we've been reconciled. By your resurrection, we've been justified. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for helping us in our weakness as we pray. And as you wrote in your word, Lord, we do not know how to pray as we should, but you continue to intercede for us according to God's will. Lord, we thank you and pray, Lord. Use us as you will. Strengthen us in our weakness and through our weakness, Lord, that your power be made great, that the power will come not from us, but by you. Of course, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If there's anyone here who wants to know what it means to become intimate with God or into a relationship with Him, feel free to speak with me or any other leaders or anybody here in the church who claims to know Christ. They will answer your questions, Lord willing. Amen. Amen.